We've got a turd in the punch bowl. I repeat, we have a turd in the punch bowl. Alright, this is just going to be a review. Uh, a short review of the complete Jewish Bible, which was translated by David H. Stern. Now, God led me to use the King James Bible. I can see that it's uh, under severe attack through the Mandela effect. But uh, thinking about jumping ship over to the complete Jewish Bible, well, let's just see uh, what it's saying here. Let's do a few acid tests first. So is First John five seven there? Let's have a look. This is uh, the complete Jewish Bible here. And they say it's translated from Textus Receptus, and yet 1 John 5 7 isn't there. There are three witnesses it should say in heaven. I'll show you what it should say. Okay, there are three that bear record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit, if you prefer. And these three are one. Um, this is from the text this receptus it does uh, say it in most of the documents of the biblical records that we have now this is the first indication that the complete Jewish Bible is really taking on the modern man or the modern person as it were which is not even a, a real term but here we see the word became a human being in the King James Bible it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us we beheld the glory and this is the next part that uh, some Jewish tradition is creeping in to this uh, Bible they're not translating it glory um, but they translate it Shekinah which is not the correct Jewish term for glory um, you might say oh but I've got books that talk about the Shekinah glory and all that stuff. Well, uh, throw them in the trash because have a look. Shekinah is the English spelling of a grammatically feminine, feminine Hebrew word that means dwelling or settling. Used to denote the dwelling and settling of the divine presence. Oh, really? So our, our Mr. Stern. Uh, Within Judaism, they teach that the presence of God is a feminine presence. And this is why we have this uh, six-pointed star here. That's what it represents. The feminine presence of a God. Okay, Not the one true God, but a God that they burned incense to. You can check that out in Jeremiah 44. If you read that, you can see that the Jews were involved in Queen of Heaven worship. Just as the Catholic Church is involved in Queen of Heaven worship and here we see this so-called Jewish star it's not really Jewish it's an occult symbol here we see it on the Pope's mitre here's some other depictions of it from uh, synagogues even in churches as well example being in Italy and Florence Here's another use of it here, so you've got like a wormhole or a space gate opening up here or a portal, whatever you want to call it, so it represents this as well. And here we see it from one of the gods in Egypt, it's a talisman of Saturn used in also witchcraft and the golden calf image which the Israelites even worshipped. Here we see it in the Kabbalah, um, Masons use this symbol as well and on and on. Uh, the red shields of course used it for the flag of Israel. Now if you want a true translation <coughs> of God's glory it's actually called the Shekan glory, that's the masculine presence of God and isn't it amazing when we look that up that uh, we see real pictures biblical pictures there's no six pointed stars uh, what we're seeing here is very close to what's being described in the Bible okay and yet you put Shekinah in and this is what you get 
feminine. So basically the complete Jewish Bible is an effeminate Bible and it encourages uh, the worship to the Queen of Heaven. Here she is, this is the Queen of Heaven, this isn't Mary, this is a demon. This is a high ranking demon, probably Lucifer. Probably Lucifer, very much likened to Lucifer worship, you see? And that's what it represents. And it's all right in front of you here. Just a little bit of research. I pray for a minute. God gives me revelation and then we get a video. And here they're even trying to implicate our Lord and Master Yeshua, the Messiah, with this effeminate presence of a false pagan God. Let's just see what the Word of God says about this. Now, I had a nice conversation with a Roman Catholic last night, and he admitted that uh, in the Catholic Church they worship the Queen of Heaven, and they say that the Queen of Heaven is Mary. So what does the Word of God say about the Queen of Heaven? This is the Word of Jeremiah, which he gave uh, to the Jews in the land of Egypt. And so you notice that this... Uh, Egyptian goddess um, or deity, whatever you want to call it, linked with the six pointed star. Um, he starts off by addressing the Jews in the land of Egypt. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, you have seen all the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem and upon all the cities of Judah. Just people don't really expect God to speak like this but yet we must learn the fact that due to sin God brings judgment on people this is how God does things God is the one who brings judgment okay if you don't repent of sin and the Catholic I was speaking to last night was trying to say that uh, the Bible doesn't say it's sinful to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven amazing Here we see, because of their wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger, and that they went to burn incense and serve other gods whom they knew not, neither they nor your fathers. Okay. And so he goes on here, burning incense to other gods. Wherefore my fury and mine anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. They are waste and desolate. Okay. And so, uh, no wonder that within Judaism, they stay as far away from uh, so-called Christians that are in the Catholic Church because they relate this, they know that it's Queen of Heaven worship, and yet deep within Judaism, deep-rooted within Judaism, uh, they have the same practices. Um, you know, as we just read in the complete non-Jewish Bible, I would I would rename it again. Incense to other gods in the land of Egypt. This is an Egyptian god, a four-pointed star again linked with Saturn, um, just linked with a number of false pagan deities. Um, the wickedness of your wives which they have committed so it seemed to be the women were involved in, in doing this uh, in Judah as well again it was a, an effeminate practice um, they are not humbled even to this day neither have they feared nor walked in my law nor my statutes that I have set before you and before your fathers so again this is talking to Catholics as well uh, as people within uh, Talmudic Judaism and so we got to cut these practices out of churches, cut these practices out of Judaism, um, stop referring to the glory of God as the Shekinah because it's not, okay? Now this is what happens if you continue to do this, um, you shall be consummated by the sword, consumed by the sword, sorry, and by famine, they shall die from the least even to the greatest. 
it's talking about famine and it's talking about the sword and uh, we know that Ireland at one time but basically was a Christian nation until the uh, Norse people came in they were Catholics and they took over Ireland and uh, Catholicism became very prominent and at that time they had a famine and so this is the same curses that uh, Queen of Heaven worship brings it's uh, famine and the sword these are the two curses that God brings through Queen of Heaven worship worshipping this Shekinah glory which is all over the church as well written by pagan wicked satanic pagan people again it confirms the sword and famine by the pestilence okay you're saying well it doesn't really mention queen of heaven worship yet well isn't it obvious let's go to verse 17 but we will certainly do whatever thing goes forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven to pour out drink offerings to her this sounds a lot like Ishtar or Easter as well again linked with this uh, deity and uh, there we are and we were well and saw no evil so they're saying like that we're not doing any evil they, they can't even see that they're doing anything wrong and yet God does not command such worship it's not in the Bible if it's not in the Bible why do you do it you're doing traditions of men don't you question where these traditions come from hot cross buns and things like that since we left to burn incense to the queen of heaven to pour out drink offerings again verse 19 we burned incense to the queen of heaven and and did we make her cakes to worship her you see these are the little Ishtar cakes that you all have at Easter <coughs> um, written here in God's word okay Um, because you have burned incense you have sinned against the Lord have not obeyed the voice of the Lord neither walked in his law nor his statutes nor his testimonies therefore this evil has happened to you as at this day so why does evil happen? because of sin because of wicked sinners that don't repent and <clears throat> turn to the one true God we have vowed to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven so the priests take vows to basically serve Mary the Queen of Heaven they're not serving God, they're not serving Jesus, they're not preaching the gospel, <clears throat> they're involved in this pagan, idolatrous, queen of heaven worship. Again, these people just vow, they make a vow to the queen of heaven. They're not making vows to God. It's an effeminate type of worship, which God hates. And in case you wondered, yes, Christmas is mentioned in Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah as well, who was a prophet to the nations. And uh, one cuts a tree out of the forest, works with the hands of a workman with an axe, decks it with silver and gold, fastens it with nails, and they still do this today, um, in about the first week of December. Okay, It's called... Uh, the Feast of Mithras, that's what they were actually doing at that time. It was on the winter equinox, you know, when the, the sun god was dying off. And it was like the shortest day of the year and then you'd raise up. It was usually done in the northern hemisphere. And so it's a Norse god. And so this Norse mythology was uh, mixed in with uh, Catholicism. It used to be that the Roman god Mithras, which was the sun god, which uh, the main the chief Roman gods, Roman Catholic god is the sun god not the son of god S-O-N but it's S-U-N that's what they're involved in worshipping and that's what this festival is all about and you know that the fir tree is uh, shaped like a triangle as we see just as the, the eye of Horus is at the top here of the triangle just like in the pyramid over here and that's what it represents represents Satan okay that's what it actually represents that's what you're worshipping that's what you're having a feast to the Antichrist on December the 25th it wasn't Jesus birthday if you want to find out when Jesus birthday was I'm sure you'll find out because God will show you again star of the ancient gods all seeing eye this is what it represents and like uh, 
well it's all about uh, sexual immorality and so on and that's generally what happens during Christmas time people get drunk and do things that uh, are sinful and this is not glorifying to God in any way shape or form if you want a good translation or even uh, one from the correct manuscripts <coughs> get a Hebrew names King James Version or it's called the restored names King James Version which you'll have Yeshua or actually it's written here Yahushua which uh, it's just another way of spelling Yeshua. I don't get too worked up about that. Just like there's various ways of spelling Stephen or, um, you know, even Jesus was spelled differently uh, 400 years ago. This is the Greek. You see, um, the, the Jai, the English Jai didn't come in until about just over about 400 years ago in the, the modern 1611 King James Bible. So, yeah, um, I think the positives obviously um, are the, the Hebrew names. That's why people would get a, a Jewish Bible because they want to learn the, the Hebrew names, the correct Hebrew names. So you're getting like Yohanan instead of John, Yeshua instead of Jesus, and uh, Elijah rather than Elias, which is in which is in the King James Bible rather surprisingly so that's to me that's the real weakness of the King James Bible is the names but you know you can get this version and I think it'll be I would say it's about the best one you could get I would recommend it in fact uh, it was the way it was written in the original version just before they brought the Jai into the English language that's the way it was written Isis Isis you see then, but the, his name is is Yoshua. This is this is probably the, the the way you should spell it directly in the Hebrew. I would say this is the the way I would spell it, and then I would see the shortened form, Yeshua, and then you could see Yahshua, which is a more poetic form, which is not really found in the manuscripts, but you know it could be supported. Um, there we have Yahweh. Uh, some Jews spell the father's name Yahweh now I believe when uh, you speak this name it represents the father the son and the Holy Spirit and these three are one as it says in 1st John 5 7 okay and you'll only get that in a King James Bible other people they pronounce it more Yahweh uh, this is the way I would tend to pronounce it you know when I was born again got the gift of tongues I really asked God about his name and I ended up just speaking the name of, of Yahweh one time when I was in prayer so I believe this is a true name but again it doesn't matter too much about how you pronounce it because there is a meaning behind every name uh, the meaning behind this name is the one who was who is who is to come I am that I am I'll be what I will be you know without beginning without ending the eternal one now to actually prove that the the complete Jewish Bible is an occult book I'd like you to turn to Isaiah chapter 14 and let's read from verse 12 it reads how did you come to fall from the heavens morning star son of the dawn so it calls this being described in this passage morning star now let's read what it should say. It's from the King James Bible. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? So actually calls him by name. His heavenly name, but this is a fallen angel named Lucifer, light bearer. That was his name in heaven, but now he's, fa he's fallen and he's become the adversary. He's become Satan. And I just got to wonder why Lucifer worshippers are always... Uh, into the occult and always uh, into some very questionable practices and again you know God strengthens nations but Lucifer or Satan weakens nations okay for thou hast said in thy heart I will ascend to heaven I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation so this is talking about churches religious congregation 
and the sides of the north, I will send above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Amen. So you would think after the complete Jewish Bible is established that the morning star is, is Lucifer or Satan, then they wouldn't use it again in the book of Revelation. Chapter 22, verse 16, I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to give you this testimony from the messianic communities. So again, you know, we who, who love um, the Hebrew names, we, we don't want them connected with pagan, pagan stuff in Judaism. But this is exactly what's happening here. And it's obviously putting people off uh, praising and worshipping the name Yeshua. Because they are questioning this name now. Because it's uh, within these occult Bibles. NIVs and complete non-Jewish Bible here. Give you to this testimony for the Messianic communities. Come on. Come on. I am the root of the offspring of David and the bright morning star. There we go. So they're trying to say that Yeshua, or Jesus, is Lucifer. It's very, very demonic. It's a recent series um, called Lucifer Morning Star. You know, so you get this guy going around doing wickedness. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of. Uh, you might call them Zionist Jews, whatever. I, I would call them uh, satanic. Um, I think they've lost their Jewish identity, so I'd just call them Satanists, regardless of whatever they're trying to say that they're Jews or whatever. Uh, Jesus describes the synagogue of Satan. And so if you've got a complete Jewish Bible, I would completely get rid of it in favor of... Uh, Hebrew names King James Bible hope this has been helpful to you may the Lord bless you thank you for watching